through your body, but they do it so persistently and in such large numbers, they create the illusion that your protons and neutrons have 99 times more mass than they actually do. So now I've got all of humanity is spinning into two-thirds of a smarty, and now, since only 1% of that is actually there, that means that I've got all of humanity fitting into 1% of two-thirds of a smarty. I just made humanity go away. There is nothing there but interactions. 99% of your mass is virtual. It's just not even, and that's for all the matter in the universe. It's everything, all the bits of matter, everything's just that way. So it kind of looks like this. Oh, wait, 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 what's this? All right. Uh, this is uh, an atom, but it's a quantum mechanical representation of a hydrogen atom. So this is, this is one electron being in multiple places all at the same time. Um, we have been given the um, idea by our books and schools and stuff, because, you know, it's convenient that the atom kind of looks like this. The atom looks like a solar system, that there's a, a sun in the middle, a star in the middle, and then you've got all these electrons orbiting around the outside in their electron shells. And that's the way that we've been told that it looks, which is actually absolute garbage, but we can't really handle the truth. Um, because really what it is, is that instead of electrons having a real existence, they actually don't exist as point particles. They can't exist as point <coughs> particles. This is what Max Planck discovered in 1900, that if, elect that if electrons were point particles in orbits around the nucleus, that they would very quickly lose their energy and spiral into the sun, as it were. There would be no atomic structure. Electrons can't be a point particle. They can't actually be any place. They have to be kind of smeared throughout the electron shell. Some places they're more likely to be, and some places they are less likely to be, but there's no place that they actually are. In fact, this is, this is an actual thing. This kaleidoscope image is actually a wave function which illustrates the locational probabilities of an excited subatomic particle, an electron. Particle is more likely to be in the red areas than the green, least likely to be in the black spaces. Could be any of those places, but isn't in any of them until, go ahead, go ahead, until, until what? So you look at it. Oh, there you go. All right. So there's nothing there on that. Particles are just energy anyway. They don't have any real existence. They have no real position in space or time. They're just probability waves. Protons and neutrons are made of quarks. Quarks have no real existence. Everything solid is made of things that don't really exist. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. Everything that you are, everything that you touch, everything that you interact with, none of it is real in the way that you think it is. There's nothing really there. So, there's really just nothing in the universe but an occasional bit of something that's not really there. Anyway, how much energy is in the universe? There's a good question. All right, so, Big Bang, you got a universe. Where did all the energy come from? Energy can only be created or destroyed, right? Thermodynamics, okay. So, where did all the energy come from? Good question. You don't know? Here we go. Here's what the universe did. This is what we think. The universe took no energy and turn it into two types of energy. Go ahead, guess. Positive and negative. Positive energy is matter. Negative energy is gravity. Gravity is an interaction between interaction between matter and space-time. So gravity exactly matches the amount of matter in the universe. There's no net energy in the universe. It took zero energy and turned it into two types. So there's nothing here. There's no energy, there's no matter, there's no particles. How intriguing is that? 
everything in the universe is defined by particles and the forces acting between them. Existence is defined by what little tiny bits of matter there actually happen to be and the relationships between them, except that the matter isn't really there. All that's there is interactions. And he says that the reason that my finger didn't go through my hand is because of electromagnetic repulsion. That's an electromagnetic interaction. That's what we call the four forces of nature. It's the gravitational interaction. It's the strong interaction, the weak interaction, the electromagnetic interaction. It is only the interactions electromagnetically that give my the possibility for atomic structure to exist in addition to the strong interaction which creates the atomic nucleus, which creates the protons and the neutrons. There's nothing there but interactions, but the interactions are so persistent that they create the illusion that there is something there so persistently that we can act like we in fact are here. We are a persistent illusion. All right, here's what, big bang, boom, got a universe, you get, what else you got? Susan history. What did the big bang give us? An empty expanding universe with light, heat, the universe expanded and cooled, and so you get darkness and cold. Why? Isn't the universe a great, big, dark, cold, empty place? Why is there anything in the universe? When it arrived, there shouldn't have been anything in it. Why is there stuff? There's stuff because along with a great, big, empty, expanding universe and light and heat and darkness, we got interactions, we have the rules, we have the laws of physics. We have gravity, quantum mechanics, strong, weak, electromagnetic interactions. Those things made stuff happen. And it happened just like this. Big Bang produces a universe, space-time, and energy. And then the fundamental elemental interactions and careful balance. And I have written up here, if you're interested, the exact seconds excuse me, the exact fraction of a second inside that first second when each one of those things arrive. So what I'm telling you is that we know this. Sometimes you know it theoretically, sometimes you know it experimentally. Gravity arrived at 10 to the minus 43rd of a second, the earliest possible moment in the universe. The strong force and electroweak heat and the Higgs boson uh, at 10 to the minus 36, that was a, called a theory of everything. Then electromagnetism of the weak force arrived at 10 to the minus 12 of a second. So the interactions all arrived. Then matter arrived at 10 to the minus 11th of a second. Quarks, gluons, and electrons arrived. Then protons and neutrons from quarks 